Tower. I'm the member experience director for the Columbia Tower Club. The Columbia Tower Club is a club that belongs to Club Corp, a sister of clubs across the nation. So whether you are a member at Columbia Tower Club, a member at one of our sister properties, or just friend or family, thank you for joining us today. We are so excited to have you for this wonderful event, Overcoming Quarantine Fatigue. So with that, I would like to get started. Did you know that people that practice an attitude of gratitude feel less aches and pains? Extensive clinical research has shown that individuals that are consistently grateful enjoy a happier existence. David has been studying and speaking about gratitude for over 20 years. He has over a thousand videos on YouTube and has made over 700, 150 presentations to champion and illustrate the incredible power of living with gratitude. He has an international bestseller author and has written many books on the subjects of gratitude, including the Broker's Daily Journal, Daily Gratitude Journal, and Six Word Lessons to Embrace Gratitude. So if you want a better quality of life, then you're going to want to pay close attention to what David has to say. And if you ever get a chance to work with David, do it. Please welcome from Seattle, Washington, that gratitude guy, David George Brook. Clapping from the, from the in-studio audience. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you so much for that. I see a lot of you, some of you have your camera on, some of you don't. Uh, I'd like to start off with just those of you that have the camera on. If you can, if you can hear me, if you can just give me a high five like this, and if you are got your camera off, just type in five to the chat to make sure we're getting through to everybody. It's uh, it's important as as Brittany said, this is a very interactive talk. That's five five five, F I V E. <laughs> anyway, five. I'm always waiting for like some other number or something in the five too, but. Uh, but great, thank you. And then one more thing before we get started, type in the city that you're from. I see a lot of you, again, with no cameras on, just names, but I kind of like to see, and let's just look down the list and see who is from where and uh, where abouts. And I see, oh, let's see, San Diego, Houston, Texas, beautiful San Diego, Sammamish, Sonomish, Fairbanks, Alaska. All right, L. Kelsey, it says, excellent. David Newman, West Seattle, Megan, Vancouver, Jennifer, Bonnie Lake. So gosh, we've got a good representation here too. So as Brittany said, this is a very interactive uh, seminar, webinar, and it's very important, especially on chat. And again, whether you have the, the camera on or not, to actually participate in some of the exercises we're going to do, because it's all about how are we gonna manage this quarantine fatigue that everybody's been going through? So it's been really challenging. We're in about our third month or so and so forth. But as I said, it's, it's very interactive and please interact and be part of it, not act like you're interested. Because when you do these exercises, some of them you may wanna even keep when you go home too. And then at the end, I've got it. We're only gonna be 50 minutes, maybe 60 minutes tops, no later than an hour. I've got a couple of gifts at the very end. And so if you'd start with just by raising your index finger and just write index in the chat, if you're sick and tired of this quarantine, Brittany, you're not sick and tired of the quarantine. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bunch of them, good. And then I see, I see index, index. I keep waiting for somebody to say like middle and I'll go, oh, thanks, real nice. Yeah, index, thing. yes, we are all, and that's probably primarily the reason that we're here. So. I'm mainly going to talk about how you can overcome this fatigue, how you can over, and naturally a huge part of this is going to be gratitude. But I want to start and just briefly for those, I see a number of you that know me on here, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I, I've been doing this speaking now for seven or eight years, and a lot of my life I faced a lot of challenges. People had died, my wife died when my sons were young, my father took his own life, and a number of things happened to me, and along the way, just so you understand who's speaking to you today, I needed to find something and it was later in life that I found gratitude as a vehicle to really help me overcome these types of things, whether it's the quarantine fatigue, loss, trauma, all of us have gotten far enough along in this life and found out that there's a lot of experiences. Life's gonna go like this and this is fantastic and down here sucks, but it's down here where you learn your lessons. And so that's what really got me to where I am today. So. And so the first thing I want to talk about is just, it depends so much on how you look at something. You have a choice every day 
You get out of bed. You can have be in a good mood, bad mood, be look to the left, look to the right, up, down, up, good, happy, sad, whatever. Those are all a choice. And we've all had friends that they start a sentence with, you don't understand. And I go, wait a minute. When somebody says you don't understand, the first thing they're going to talk about is an excuse. That's what's coming. So I tell, don't give me this. You don't understand. Decide that day. And if something I say today resonates with you, start tomorrow morning and change it. That's how quickly something like that can happen. And so I think it depends again on how much you, or how you look at something rather. I remember years ago, I used to run a lot of 10K races and then eventually I ran a marathon. And I was running a 10K here in Seattle and it went from Medina to Husky Stadium across the new floating bridge, 6.2 miles and it was raining and I'd run a lot. And so I was actually in decent shape, but I just was sucking the big one. It was just like kids, little kids were passing me. And I went, what is going on here? This is terrible. And as I get up towards the rise where they used to have those fountains, you know, I'm looking, there's all these people in front of me and I just was so depressed. And then I thought, wait a second. And I turned my head. It's hard to look back when you're running. You're at a decent speed and look back. And I see thousands of people all the way up past the toll plaza, up into Bedina. And I think that's uh, Overlake Golf Course. And as I'm running, I turn back forward and I thought, you know, here's what's interesting. If all these people in front of me were not here, I would be in first place. I would be like out front. And it's like all these people, if they just decided not to go today, honey, I don't think I'm going to take the, the go to the race. Guess who would be in first place? So it depends on how you look at something. And because we're talking about the quarantine and because we're talking about coronavirus, I want to just read something that I put together about some of the silver linings of this coronavirus pandemic, because there's been a lot of negativity. A lot of people have talked about how terrible it is. And there has been, yes, truthfully, a lot of bad things that have happened from job loss to the economy, to people who put their lives into their businesses that have lost, and may not come back and so forth. But it does depend on how you look at it. I had somebody text me the other day, okay, Mr. Gratitude guy, uh, tell me what's positive about what's going on right now. And so I thought about this and I went through just a couple of quick things and I thought, look at the technology that's come out of this. Here's the computers that we have. Zoom is a huge thing. Webinars, cell phones, how all these texting and apps uh, options and choices. The time that's been created, there are people that are homeschooling their kids and the people that have been at home they're gonna, that might be frustrated with it in the meantime, but looking back, That'll be time they'll never forget that they spend extra time with the children instead of sending them off to school. That's been a huge thing. Incredible advances in science. There'll probably be a vaccine here before long, and I don't think there was with the Spanish flu 100 years ago. The social connection. So many people have said, we have family dinner again. I remember growing up in Spokane, Washington, family dinner was a huge thing, and nobody even remembers that. And now that's sort of come back. This personal touch importance. I was talking to a young lady in Maryland yesterday about a talk I'm going to do, and she says, I miss the handshakes. I miss the hugs. I miss going up and giving somebody a warm smile and being more than six feet away from them. So it really makes you appreciate that. The efficiencies, you go to somebody to have coffee with them, and you drive an hour, spend an hour with them, and drive an hour. That's three hours you had to commit for a 45-minute to one-hour talk, and you can do it on Zoom and be done and be right back to business. So there's all these conveniences. You can order groceries. I get a lot of Amazon Fresh. I haven't been in a grocery store in a long time. There's food and meals delivered to your door. And then this whole idea of this community sense of being all in this together is so important. There's that sense of being a part of something bigger than you. And finally, no big surprise, my last one is embracing gratitude. If you focus on gratitude, and if you got nothing out of this webinar today except this, one of the things that embracing gratitude does is it helps you to realign your priorities. You find out what's really important, and you find out it's your health, it's your family, it's your friends, it's your children, it's the people that are close to you, and it makes you realign those. We all come across people that are so messed up because they're going so many different directions I'm so this, I'm this, I got a million things going on and they're kind of forgetting what is the important things in their life, which if they had to stop and think about what those were, and we're going to make a little list of those in a little bit, but this is where gratitude really shines. You find out what's really important and what makes you happy. Gratitude turns what you have into enough. I cannot emphasize it enough time. Gratitude turns what you have into enough. We are constantly, yourself and myself included, like chasing people, better car, better house, better wife, better husband, bigger job, more money, better, big, big, bigger boat. It's ridiculous. It's like a cat chasing its tail. So it's so very important. And it depends on how you look at something. So first exercise, 
Brittany said, get a piece of paper and have a pen and keep your cell phones handy. And we're going to use those in a little bit. And here's the first thing I want you to do. I want you to take a piece of paper down and I want you to write these two, these two words. You are. Y-O-U-A-R-E. You are. Put them on the somewhere near the top, somewhere up in the left-hand side, whatever works for you. All right, excellent. Now, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you 30 seconds, and I want you to think about, later I'm going to have you do this with somebody who's a partner, but we don't have people, most people are on their own today. I want you to think about the five or 10 things your mother, father, or maybe biggest cheerleader would say to describe you. You are driven. You are passionate. You are very happy. You are inspiring. Write the five or 10 things that your mother or biggest cheerleader would say about you. And I'll give you 30 seconds. And guess what I have for you on that? 30 seconds, go. Isn't that clever? Okay, 30 seconds, thank you. So again, if you're on the chat, here's what I'd like to ask you. As you sit and reread those five or 10 things that you wrote that your biggest cheerleader and mother would say about you, I want you to think about your mindset. And I want you to think about as you read them and somebody says you're creative, you're talented, you're driven, whatever that person would say about you, I want you to think about how that impacts you. And I want simply one thing, and that is if you're live, I want you to give me a high five. If you feel better after reading those or type five into the chat. So if you feel better, high five in the window or five into the chat. And I'll let you guys pop up on the chat here and see. Uh, David Miller, hi David. Mark Caton, Lori Homer. Look at all these people. Nice to see all you, Mariana. Five, five. Connor's in the house from San Diego. <laughs> All right, it looks like nothing but fives. So here's the whole, I call that the UR exercise. If you want to take it one step further, when I do live presentations, not Zoom, I have people pair up with somebody else and have them describe the other person. I give them 60 seconds. You are, if I did it with Brittany, Brittany would describe me, I would describe Brittany you would be surprised at things that people come up to say about you. And it's incredible. Look at all those fives, all those high fives from people that are saying, this makes me feel better. Well, that's what gratitude will do for you. When it helps you to get a better handle on yourself and you start believing that, I will never understand why we are so hard on ourselves. It's one of the questions that I have about life that I'm just never going to get. Again, I'm included in this too. It's like, why do we beat the heck out of ourselves? And then here somebody says, one of the biggest ones I get when I do this pairing up is you're so intense. It's so intense. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't think I'm that intense. But anyway, and so, but when you read that, and then when you do it in person, I want to, I want to keep that card. And so when you see that, that's what happens. And it's amazing because how we talk to ourselves. And again, this is all the foundation around using gratitude to get through funks like the, quor the quarantine fatigue that we're all experiencing. But you, when you have a better connection with yourself, it's amazing how much better everything works. There was years and years, I would call myself a word that I, I stopped saying about 10 or 15 years ago, and I won't even say it anymore, but I will, I will actually uh, spell it out. And that was L-O-S-E-R. And I just, I couldn't believe it. I used to call myself that all the time. And I finally stopped doing that. And if you can't advocate for yourself, who's going to advocate for you? So getting that kind of relationship with yourself is so important. And if you think about it on that one that you just did on a piece of paper, if you have a three by five card or a note card or something, you may want to write down those five or 10 things you, you thought of about to say about yourself and keep it handy. It may be something you want to refer to. All those cards I've done with people where I paired up have been ones that have been absolutely uh, incredible and very flattering and very touching and ones I've kept. I've kept every one that I've ever gotten. So anyway, next thing I want to chat about is I want gratitude, as you can tell, can make such a difference. It can help. And if you harness its power, it helps you to focus on what you have. And it's so important. So 
Here's an example where I want to do some masterminding and getting a little idea. So in the chat, type in the number one coping mechanism that you have done or used to, to deal with this quarantine that we're facing, this pandemic, this shelter in place. Type in the number one thing that has helped you to get through this. And I wanna maybe share that with the group. Gardening, that's another one. Thanks, Carrie. Exercise, that is so Samantha, breathing exercises. Sleep, Connor, meditation. Oh no, surfing. Connie T, uh, meditation. Michael Johnson, meditation. Exercise from coach, water, artwork, Mariana. Create valuable content for my clients, good stuff. Praying, meditation, Brittany. Communicate with daily with people I love from Jody. Excellent. Yeah, those are some good ones. That's, I really wanted to see what people said. Zoom happy hours. <laughs> That's good too. Meditation and prayer. So think of some of the themes that are going through that, that make such a big difference. And you see exercise a lot. New hobby, buying sports cards, maintaining contact with family. Thanks, Eugene. Steve says golf. Sheila says flying and paddle boarding. So you see a lot of theme there of meditation and physical connections and so forth. I started something a while ago that uh, is, is really been helpful to me. And I thought, what are two really important things I can deal with this pandemic is exercise and focusing on gratitude. So I started what I call my little gratitude walk. And every day I go out Everybody and I do this little Brooke, out for the gratitude walk. On Monday, June 29th, that was yesterday. Out for the daily gratitude walk. And I was thinking as I American. It made me think what would our subject or our topic be for today? About being grateful. Or, holy oh cow, I think about the times in my life I didn't have a car for one reason or another. Couldn't afford one when I was growing up or was in the shop or any of those other things. And I thought about, look at the three of the car. So take a moment today, as I always ask you to do, get out there, get those 10,000 steps in. Maybe get out in nature if you can, like this forest I get to walk through. And then take a moment to think about, oh, there's the kids' camp. To think about how nice it's been to have a car and have the freedom to go wherever you darn well please. So, well, you get the idea. And I think it's a great, you saw all those, those things that people mentioned. Here's Rhoda Books, another one. Um, and so, as an example, anything where you can combine two or three things, you can combine exercise, which a bunch of people talked about exercise. You can combine thinking about what you're grateful for, pick a, a subject of the day, if you will. As I mentioned yesterday, it was having a car. I tried to do something different every single day. And then I've also added listening to a book on Audible so I can do my reading and still get in my 10,000 or 12,000 steps and so forth. So consider doing that. It's really neat. I just call it the gratitude walk. And again, it's combining two or three things together that may, um, may work for you. It's kind of multitasking at its finest. So. Next thing I want to talk about is the science of gratitude. There is tons of science around gratitude. Now I'm talking where it affects you, your body, mentally, emotionally, uh, spiritually in a way, but physically, the physiology of your body. So I want you to think, I want you to read this or hear this, if you will. And I'm going to show you what some of these people have said from these studies. And this is research and studies that have been proven over and over again, and it says, appreciating what we have measurably improves our relationships, our life satisfaction, our health, our sleep, and it improves our physical health, leading to fewer aches and pains. Brittany mentioned that in the uh, introduction about that. Lower blood pressure, less depression, big thing. Depression, anxiety, people being down. A lot of people are through this or having a tough time with that. It makes sense because of the stress that they're under, but how can you manage that? Well, again, gratitude is a big piece of that. Grateful people are more likely to take care of their health, exercise more often, and schedule regular, schedule regular checkups. Gratitude reduces toxic, toxic emotions like envy, resentment, frustration, anger, and aggression, and enhances positive emotions like empathy, caring, and sympathy. Too much of our time, this, I love this, too much of our time is spent pursuing things we don't currently have. Man, talk about a cat chasing its tail. Oh, Joe's got a better boat than I do. I need a better job. I need more money. Gratitude reverses that and realigns our priorities. I mentioned that earlier. To appreciate what we currently have today, not worrying so much about what am I going to have tomorrow. I can't wait till I have that new promotion. It's kind of, again, the cat chasing its tail. Happiness is rarely constant. 
So although happiness is a fantastic goal, gratitude for the tools that get you there are more important. How easily we can lose sight of everything we have to be thankful for when the circumstances of life become unpleasant. So think COVID-19 coronavirus. It's easy to lose sight when we have such a pandemic that's engulfed the nation and obviously the world as well. And finally, something I think is very powerful. We are our own worst critics and we hold ourselves to impossible standards. Think about that card that you just filled out. Hopefully you put it on a piece of paper, you convert it to a card. And we continually compare ourselves to others. What a nightmare. Why do we do this? Stop it. And, I'm, and, and you know, as I'm talking about this, I'm actually listening to this myself so I can hear myself so going, Brooke, stop it. So we are all guilty of it. It makes such a big difference. Science says that the more you choose positive and kind words to describe yourself, just as you did on that piece of paper from your mother or your biggest cheerleader, the more you choose that, your health, your body, and your progress, the less anxiety you will experience. So I can't tell you how strongly I feel about that. So another exercise, get out your piece of paper, another piece of paper, the same one, whatever you want to do. And I'm going to have, this is going to involve a little bit of homework, but I'm going to start you off with this. The exercise is called the top most memorable experiences of your life. So just write that down, the top most memorable experiences of your life. And this is one, frankly, I think you may want to convert to a, a Word doc at some point, too. And here's what I'm going to do. For right now, I'm going to give you 30 seconds again with the Jeopardy theme. I want you to write down as many things, preferably in priority order, the most important slash memorable. This doesn't mean just money or business or anything. It could be kids. It could be family. It could be things you've done, whatever it is, and write five or 10 of, 10 of them as fast as you can. I'll give you 30 seconds, and then we'll come back and, and uh, holy cow, where, what happened to Jeopardy? You know, I'll get it back. <laughs> anyway, 30 seconds. Write down as many as you can, hopefully five to 10. Most memorable life events go. Okay, so that got you started on this. So here's what I want you to do. And I'm gonna ask in a minute, back for another five from the chat, and it's also a high five for those with the camera on. Uh, I'm gonna ask you to do some homework on this for me. And today is Tuesday, June 30th. So I want you to promise me that you will get this done by the weekend. So that's like four or five days. And that is to complete that list make it go all the way out to 25, 50, or 100. You can choose how many you want in priority order. And I will tell you, I'm a little more advanced in age, so you can imagine that mine was probably higher because I've been on the planet quite a bit of the time. But I have 100 things, and I want you to, and the reason why it's neat to put it in a priority order is because you go and you start with the very top things, the top 10 things are the most important on down, and Maybe you put it on a Word doc, maybe you put it on an Excel spreadsheet so you can move some things around, but put them in order and it's going to be a blend of the different things. I'm not going to go through my list, but one of the things in my top 10 was talking to 10,000 soldiers at Joint Base Lewis McCord. I'll never forget that. And those memorable things you got a chance to do in your life. And then when you print it up, so wait a minute, first of all, high five. If you promise me you'll do it by this weekend, can I see a five to the window and a five in the chat? Thank you, that's what I, thank you very much. See, this is very interactive. Look at all those fives again. Derby, what a cool name. Jennifer, Jill, five, 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 thank you. Connie, Lori Comer, hi, Lori. And I'll tell you, it's, it's gonna make a big difference. And here's the thing about that. Why are we talking about this around the science of gratitude? Because if you're having a tough day, if you're dealing with this quarantine that we're all talking about today and trying to get some methods and techniques, you look at that list of the top 25 or 50 or 100 most memorable things that you'll do, it will shift your mindset. 
It'll make a big difference and it'll get you thinking a lot more positive. Is this thing negative? Yes. But do we choose to be negative or positive? We can acknowledge what's happened. It's very tough. It's challenging. I know that. But we can also see the things that we can pull and get the positives out of this and decide that we want to turn left on certain days instead of turning right. So please keep that in here. And again, keep that handy. Maybe you put it on a card or something too. So that's going to make such a big difference. So, all right, moving right along. Thank you for being a good audience. Thank you for high-fiving me and uh, all the, the uh, fives, all the fives in the chats. Thank you. Susan, Jim Rio, Teresa White. Thank you, guys. All right, next I want to talk about what I call the centerpiece of this whole gratitude thing that I do, whether it's helping with the dealing with the fatigue of being quarantined or anything else in life, depression, anxiety, uh, dis disappointment, so many things in life, and that's a gratitude journal. Now, again, by high five and the people there, how many people have heard of a gratitude journal? And put five in the chat if you have. I get my studio audience here has heard of one. That's for sure. And a bunch more five. John Flora. Hi, John. And uh, Scott Knutson. Excellent. Five. So a lot of people have heard of, heard of a gratitude journal. So I happen to have one as the gratitude guy. That's probably a shock. And here is the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal, or as people that introduce me every so often say, it's the Brokers. I go, it's not Broker, okay? There's two O's. It's Brooker. Gosh, read the introduction. Gosh, anyway, you did a fine job. On it. You were fine. Anyway, so here it is, the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. So how this is, is structured is that every day you have a little gratitude today, the day and the date. Mine's already set up for tomorrow, Wednesday, January, excuse me, July 1st a daily number, which we'll talk about in a second, two lines for current events or special occasions, and then about six or eight lines for what you're grateful for, two lines for the highlight of your day. We're gonna talk about that in a second. And then on the right-hand side of the day is your gratitude intentions, otherwise known as your gratitude tomorrow. And I don't have time to go into much detail about that today, but that's programming your brain to be grateful for things that haven't even happened yet. Because your subconscious mind in the prefrontal cortex where it sits will guide you because it doesn't know necessarily the difference between what you think has happened and what actually has happened. So I program, I once wrote in there, I want to speak to thousands of people. And then eventually I spoke to the 10,000. Now I have a million views on YouTube. And so I just kept pushing bigger and bigger and bigger. And it programs that in your mind. Whatever your goal is, whatever you want to do, you put it in the gratitude intention side and it makes such a big difference. So you don't have a gratitude journal. I'm going to give away some at the end. That's part of two prizes I have or two gifts, if you will. So, but here I want you to do another exercise that is going to have to do with a gratitude journal and you don't have it. So get another piece of paper, put it on the same piece of paper, maybe get a card. And here's the first thing I want you to think about. I want you to think about your daily number. So what is your daily number? Well, as I describe it, your daily number is from one to 10, 10, is the best day of your life or one of the best day of your lives. And one is a day that we don't really want to talk about much. It's just not going too well. So I want you to write your day. You can do halves. You can do six and a half, seven and a half, nine and a half, whatever it is. And I want you to think and kind of take your temperature. And I want you to write down that number upper in the upper part of your paper, uh, card, whatever you have, and put a circle around it. And nobody's going to see this, so this is very personal. You don't have to share this with anybody. I'm not going to ask you to put it into the chat. But in any case, write it up there now. You got that down. Now, another 30 seconds. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to write as many things that you are grateful for, hopefully in priority order, as many as you can, maybe five, maybe 10, in order of priority that you are so grateful for in your life. 30 seconds, go.
Okay, that's been about 30 seconds. Hopefully you wrote down five to 10 things. I used to occasionally share with people what I wrote down, but it's really kind of a personal thing. I will say that, I will say this though, the number one thing I usually write about is my health because frankly, if you don't have your health, you don't really have a lot. It's very difficult to navigate this world if you're not physically and or mentally together. So uh, you can imagine after that things such as your family and children and loved ones. Drink it up. But anyway, so you just wrote that down. And again, you don't have the journal in front of you, but this is a good exercise to do. Now I want you to reread the things. It'll just take you about 10 seconds. Reread the things that you wrote down and write another number at the bottom of the page after you've written down those five to 10 things. Could be the same number for your daily number or it could have changed. So go ahead and read them again and then write another number at the bottom. Could be the same, could be different. Okay, so by show of hands, how many people from the top number to the bottom number, how many people's number, and you just give me a five in the chat or five here, stayed the same from the top to the bottom? How many stayed the same? Oh, yeah, raise your hands. Okay, handful, that's about what I expected. Okay, now with a high five, how many people's number in the high five in the window or in the chat went up from the number at the top to number to the bottom? Five, 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 five. Sometimes I would say at a live presentation, my talk is over now because everybody saw what gratitude you could do. And I go, okay, I'm done. That's it. And like nobody laughs. So I've just stopped doing that bit because it doesn't seem to get anybody to laugh. So, but that's the, that's the focus of a gratitude journal. It makes such a difference. And I will tell you again, to have it on a little three by five card, the things that you just wrote, you know, I've saved all those cards when I've done that with people. And it's at three o'clock in the morning when you can't sleep, when you're depressed about the uh, fatigue that you're getting from the quarantine, from the pandemic, when you've had a tough day, you pull that card out and you read those five to two things, five to 10 things, excuse me, and look what it just did to your daily number. And that was a 30 second exercise. This gratitude journal takes five minutes to write in. If you're a slow writer, it might be six or seven minutes, but it's not much more than that. And I will tell you, it's always funny because I sell the gratitude journals. I'm gonna give some away today at the end. I sell the gratitude journals at my talks that are live and people invariably come up and they see one that's kind of a little bit dog-eared because these last about three or four months. And they go, is this your gratitude journal? And I go, can I look at it? Sure. Yeah, I don't, don't look too closely. And so but they just kind of thumb through it a little bit. And, they, and this guy says one day, he says, wow, you write in this every day. And what? You're, you're kidding. I, I write in every day. You're kidding. What do you think? I'm going to be sitting here talking on, the, on a Zoom call or a meeting and saying, I just write occasionally. You, though, I want you to write every day. You should do it every single day, but me, I just do it occasionally because I only want to feel good occasionally. So it makes such a big difference to be consistent on that. And I will tell you that it's something that if you practice it and gain momentum, uh, it is just going to make a big, huge, huge difference. So take your cell phones and I want you to write down this phone number. This is my phone number slash text number 206-371-8309. Three seven one eight three zero nine, and I want you to text me the number one thing you're grateful for. Just one thing. I guess it could be two, but one thing. I like to kind of pull my audience and get a flavor of what people are grateful for. So, two zero six three seven one eight three zero nine. The number one thing that you are grateful for. Okay, and please keep texting that. In the meantime, I have a live studio audience today, who are on Zoom, of course, with Brittany Flower and uh, Michael Johnson, otherwise known as MJ. Uh, and MJ said to me the other day, he was at my last talk, and he said something about the success he'd had with the Gratitude Journal, and I said, would you do me a favor and just tell the, the troops 
the, the associates, the Zoomy attendees, what gratitude and the gratitude journal has done for you. So MJ, come on over here. I'm going to pop out of the seat and I'm going to let him tell you in his own words. All right. Hello, everybody. And thank you. Um, oh, I was fortunate enough to be gifted the gratitude journal and uh, I used it about two months now and I have not missed one day. And uh, there's been a big difference. We uh, originally talked about uh, what your number was. And when I first started doing this, I was a solid six. And uh, consistently now in the last two months, I'm a, an eight or a nine each and every single day. Um, it's fantastic because what it does for me is uh, it sets my intention for each and every single morning. Um, I start off and write in it. Like I said, it's five to seven minutes maximum that I do. And then I also meditate. And I've actually did it backwards too, where I meditated and then I did the gratitude journal. And by uh, writing my intentions and what I'm grateful for puts me in a better mindset to meditate and then to start my day. So it's, it's really fantastic and it does so much uh, setting your intentions for what's going on in your life and uh, putting it in a positive perspective. Thank you. Cool. Cool. Thank you, MJ. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And he said to me the other day uh, when we were going to be getting together for this webinar and he said, um, I write it and I haven't missed a day. And I went, wow, because people don't really generally miss, you know, they miss, oh, I'm doing better on it. I do it occasionally. I try to do it every other day or so forth. But just like I said to that kid, when he says, you write it every day. And I said, well, of course I do. Because every time I write in my gratitude journal, I feel better. So why wouldn't you want to write in every single day? And you're talking a five or six minute investment. And speaking of writing every day, you're writing every day, right, Brittany? Yes. Yeah, good. That's what I thought. You're not <laughs> missing <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, will, I will tell you what a difference it makes because it's so powerful. I had a mother that was, was uh, bipolar. They called it manic depressive back then. And she would do these sort of nasty things. She'd call me and tell me she was going to commit suicide or take all these sleeping pills. And she would have this little sleeping pills and she would shake them like this and go, if you don't get over here and see me, I'm going to take all these pills. And I thought, gosh, what a terrible thing to do to a child. But you know, it, it just, that's how we all have different challenges in life. So that's how it works. But as I grew up, I got some of that occasional depression that I dealt with. And I noticed how it impacted me. And what are the things I can do to, to take a healthy approach to having a one or two or a three day versus a seven, eight or nine or 10 day. Now that you know how I, I use the gratitude journal as a, a sort of a way to quantify that. So the thing that, that happened, I went up to, in this particular case, I went up to Burlington to do a talk. And I woke up in the morning and I was like a two. So, and again, you can kind of get the scale. I didn't ask anybody. I didn't say, put your number in the chat because it's too personal. And if you're having a great day, fantastic. If you're having a bad day, I don't want you to have to tell anybody. It's a very personal type thing. But I went to a, a Starbucks before I went up to Burlington and I took my gratitude journal and I wrote in it as I always do. And I noticed that that got me up to about a four or a five. And so I felt a little better after writing there, but still not my normal, you know, eight, nine or 10. So I went up and I did the talk. And after the talk was done, I'm selling books. And this gal comes up, she's crying. And she says, can I give you a hug? She gives me a hug. And she goes, you just changed my life. And at that point, this is six or seven years. I'd never heard that before. And I've been blessed enough to hear that type of thing a lot since, but I'd never heard it at the time. And so I gave her a hug and she said, I'm going to get a couple of gratitude journals for my kids and, and so on. And it was just interesting that I just, she said, thanks. And, and can I give you another hug? And then she leaves. So I go out in the car up in Burlington, about 80, 90 miles north of Seattle. I'm getting ready to head back to Seattle. And I realize I've got a huge smile on my face. And I think now I'm like a nine or a 10. And I think, so I went from a two to when I woke up to a four or five by writing in my gratitude journal at Starbucks. And then by changing a life and speaking, there's about 150 people to these people. And her telling me, you, you changed and saved my life type of thing. And now it was a nine or a 10. And people always giggle, but I really mean it when I say I didn't have a drink. I didn't smoke a cigarette. I didn't have a joint. I didn't do some powder. All these things, prescription medication. I, I mean, there's all these ways. What are people trying to do with that stuff? They're just trying to cope. They're just trying to get through things. And what I'm offering today is so much about this, whether it's the quarantine, fatigue, or anything else in your life, there's healthy ways to process this stuff. So when you're doing this and you're on the down part, it can make such a big difference. So I just, I highly recommend it. And I will give you a, a chance to get some gratitude journals here at the very end. Um, I wanna make a little request if I may, I got a couple little requests. Can I just do something? Can I take just a minute to tell you guys something? High five in the chat. Okay, thank you, thank you. 
I want to just talk a little bit about my speaking and and thank you again for that. But as you can probably tell, I'm obviously very passionate about gratitude and how the immense power can help you. In fact, I get so excited. I have a little tape on my MacBook that says, slow down. Because people always go, God, you talk fast. And I go, well, I'm excited about it and so forth. So I would just ask this favor. Uh, if you would just take a minute and think about anyone you know that would benefit from my talk. And I'm thinking you might be part of a group or you know a company or a corporation or an association that hires speakers and talk with the, uh, it tires them to talk to their associates. And as an example, here's Beth Wojcik, the CEO of Special Olympics. She wrote, David's workshop helped change the culture of my staff. We became more thankful and respectful of what we each contribute to make big things happen. Gratitude has worked its way into our communication with one another, close quote. So if you would think about, it, if you have some opportunities or, or something like that, please type your name and phone number into the chat and I'll follow up with you in the next 24 hours. Just anything that where somebody might be needing a speaker, or if you think about it in the next day or so, Brittany put the contact information into the, um, into the chat too. So I would really appreciate it because so much of it to me is all about spreading this really important message. So if you could do that for me, I would really appreciate it. So, all right, moving on, I wanna talk about a couple more things. We're gonna take about 10 more minutes. Find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose. I think the most important relationship you'll ever have is the one you have with yourself. And I understand that people talk about their, their Jesus, God, church, and I, I'm a Christian and all these different things. That's all very important too. But, but that relationship that you have with yourself is so critical. And I remember thinking about, well, how do you decide what kind of a relationship you have with yourself? And I noticed that I was down in Reno this one time and I was with a buddy of mine and it was when the slots still had the quarters in them and they would crash down. And so it wasn't like the little certificates that they give you now and stuff. And I noticed that I heard all this screaming and I look over there and he's put a quarter in this thing and it's a thousand, he's won a thousand dollars. So the quarters are just crashing down, making all this noise. And he's going, Brooker, Brooker, look at this. I won a thousand dollars. And I, as I walk over there, and he's going like this with his fists in the air. And I realized, I thought, man, this is so exciting. He goes, I'm buying dinner. I mean, I'm treating dinner because I got this big win. I, well, that's really great. And so then as I was sitting there thinking about it, I thought, you know what's funny? I'm happy for him. I'm actually truly happy for him. But truthfully, I'd be just a teeny bit happier if it was me getting that thousand dollars in quarters. Now, does that sound selfish? I don't know. But all I know is when you have the, this idea that the relationship you have with yourself, they say charity starts at home, build a good foundation, put the air mask on you first, then put it on your child, those types of things. I think it's important. So that relationship you have with yourself is really important. Really, really important. You need to work on that all the time. And gratitude will help you really solidify that. You've seen some exercises already that's made such a big difference. And the next thing is, is your passion. How do you find out what you're passionate about? You can tell I'm passionate about gratitude. Gosh, that's a huge thing for me. And a guy once, I was having lunch with him, and he takes out a piece of card, there's some piece of paper, and he writes, David Brook, his name was Michael Hartzell. And he writes a million dollars, and he signs his name, and he hands it to me, and he goes, would you take this check for me for a million dollars? And I said, sure. And he goes, well, there's only one condition. He said that uh, if you take this check, you have to stop being that gratitude guy. And he goes, would you do it? And I went, look at those heads in the chat, <laughs> in, the, in the screens, I love that. And I go, no. And he goes, you found your passion. So to me, I would ask each one of you to think over these next few days when you're doing your top 25 or 50 or 100 most memorable events and just thinking about this talk and gratitude and the gratitude journal and those types of things, that it can make such a difference if you just focus on what am I passionate about? What did I always want to do when I grew up? What would I do if I didn't have any, if I didn't get paid for something? I just loved what I was doing. Any of those things to help you find what you're passionate about. Clearly, I found this and it's made such a big difference. And I will tell you that it's so important. I see my son Connor's on the call. And I remember I wanted to be a speaker when I was 19 years old. And it took me 45 years to get the guts to leave the corporate world so I could become a speaker. And I was working, I was managing a big box hardware store. And I came home, I think it was December 26, 2012, I believe, 13. And Connor's sitting on the couch. And he's 17 at the time. And, and I, I just had made up my mind. He goes, what are you doing home? It's like two in the afternoon. And I went, um, 
well, actually, uh, I quit. He goes, you quit? And I go, yeah. He goes, you quit being the manager of the store, the whole store? And I go, yeah. And he goes, well, what are you going to do now? And I said, uh, well, I'm going to become a speaker. And he looks up from the couch and he goes, well, that's just super dad. And so I, I just went, that wasn't quite what I was expecting. And he goes, I have a question for you. What are we going to do for food? <laughs> I went, well, um, I haven't figured out that part of the plan yet, but I just know that since I was 19, I wanted to be a speaker and it took me a long time to get the guts to do it and to take the, the risk and that type of thing. So sometimes if you have a great connection with yourself, if you find out what you're passionate for, you're probably going to find out what your purpose is. And I found out what mine was, and I'm thrilled. And I look at these other people, like, if you wonder the people that found their purpose you can use for an inspiration, you have Joe Paterno at Penn State, and he gets in some trouble, and he's fired and dies, like, three months later. And uh, Bear Bryant was a huge coach at Alabama, and he retired after all these national championships and things. Like Two months later, he's dead. And even Andy Rooney was quite a bit older on, on uh, 60 Minutes. And then he does his last show. And like a month later, he's, he passes away. I mean, there's a reason because those people had found their passion on that. In fact, I will tell you, if I, take, if I take this $20 bill, I just happen to have handy here. Now, I'm not live, so I can't actually hand it to you. But if I hand it to you and I said, here's a $20 bill. And I said, would you take it? Most people raise their hand. There's other people in the audience just look at me like, mm-hmm, yeah, whatever. Yeah, we know you got some little, little trick here. But if I said most people, I think, would just take it. Here's a free 20. But I asked people, so let me ask you this. If I do this and it's all crunched up, would you take it? And, you know, most people raise their hand. And then if I put it on the floor and stomp on it with my foot and then I smooth it out like this, would you still take it? And most people say yes. And then if I look at Andrew Jackson is on the 20, and if I look at that and I say to Andrew Jackson, I said, you're a piece of crap, and I think you're worthless, and I don't think you belong on this planet. I don't even know why you're even here. Andrew Jackson on the 20 would look back at me and he would say, well, Mr. Speaker Man, you can say whatever you want, but I'm still worth 20 bucks. And he would be right. He'd still be worth 20 bucks. So my question for you, I usually like to give this. Didn't I give you the 20 last time? You did. I like and I brought something. a gratitude journal. And then you brought a gratitude journal. I appreciate that. And I always try to give the 20 to somebody in the front row, too, because they're sitting up front in a lot of those big talks and so forth. But the whole key to this is, why do you let somebody crunch you, step on you, tell you you don't belong here, don't deserve to be here, and that, frankly, they devalue you from 20 to 15 to 10 to five, to the worst of all, zero, devalue to nothing and let them get away with it. Well, one of the ways you can prevent that is focusing on gratitude and having a really clear understanding of who you see in the mirror, getting to know that person, getting to know the, all the good things, which is why a couple of those exercises I'm gonna just ask you to please hold on to. So anyway, okay, so last thing I wanna talk about too is a couple, actually a couple more things is if you want, you've heard this before. If you want to help yourself, help others. So what are we talking about again? Quarantine fatigue. If you want to, you can go out and do all sorts of things that you can go to a food bank, you can go to a church, you can volunteer, you can help somebody in the homeless area, donate your time, money. There's all these things that you can do. So one more exercise to help you on this quest to knock this fatigue out of your brain and just try to see this glass half full as many days as you can. So on your piece of paper, I want you to, and this is another homework, I want you to write down the names of three people that you will contact in the next three days to see how you can help and support them. Three names of, or three, the names of three people that you will contact, text, email, phone call, voicemail, email, whatever it might be. Send them a letter, send them a card. Promise me you'll do that by this weekend. Same thing on your top homework. Can I get a high five if you'll get it done? High five, fives in the chat. I'm holding all of this to you because I'm recording the chat. I want to see those fives pop up. Yes, five, Samantha, Jennifer, Derby. Love that name. Carrie, Anna. Excellent. Just make that commitment to me, but more importantly, make it to yourself. And I think that'll make a big difference. So 
All right, a couple more things. And I just, it's so important, and you've heard that before, if you want to help yourself, help other people, it just makes such a difference. It's, it's just, oh, I can't tell you how important that is. Okay, get your cell phones again, if you will. And I know you're busy making those numbers, and we're going to wrap up here in about five minutes, maybe five, six minutes. So take your cell phones. Every Monday morning, I send out a one-minute gratitude video called the Monday Morning Minute. It's on a different subject of gratitude. Uh, today, yesterday was the cavalry ain't coming. And I realized that there was a couple of ways to sell, sell cavalry too. Last week it was uh, get busy dying, get busy living or get busy dying. But it's always about gratitude. So if you'd like to get that, a lot of people like to get that. I want you to type the word grateful into this text, 42828 on your text. 42828 is the number and just type in the word grateful. G-R-A-T-E-F-U-L. The number is 42828 at the top. And then the word grateful in the message. And it'll ask you to give you uh, give it as email. And it'll get you on that Monday morning list. So. All right. 42828, the word grateful. So one of the, the, the uh, things I want to do too, and, and again, I'm going to wrap up shortly, is first one of the gifts I want to give you is if you go to my website, thatgratitudeguy.com, www, it's in the chat, but thatgratitudeguy.com, you'll see a banner that pops up and it says you can get a signed Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. They sell for $15. A signed copy sent to you for just the shipping, which I think is $7. So it's, if you go to that, and that's, and I got a second little even better gift, but if you just would like to get a journal for yourself, they last about 45 days, maybe 60, uh, 60 days, or uh, uh, excuse me, about 60 to 75 days, depending on how uh, often that you write and so forth. But I, I use about three or four of these a year, but it makes such a difference. And that will, I will send you a signed version. And by the way, just so you think I said signed, I was signing some gratitude journals for Brittany this morning, just so you may or may not know about me so I don't get carried away. One day I'm at a, at a talk and there's about 400 people and they do these car, these business cards and the girl wins. Her name was Jennifer. So she wins the gratitude journal. So they pick the card out. She comes up to the stage and I'm on the stage by the podium and I have a journal and I hand her the journal. I go, congratulations in front of all these people. And I, she starts to walk back to her seat and she, I said, hey, by the way, if you'd like later, I'll sign that for you. And she looks back at me and she goes, that's okay. I just went, Wow. So clearly not John Grisham, not John Mishner, <laughs> not nothing like that. We make no, no promises here. Just a guy trying to spread the word of gratitude. So you'll get a sign when, whether you want it signed or not, but clearly that wasn't important for her. So anyway, but so that's that gratitude guy.com. And I've got all the different things in the list. And no, let me ask for one more request. If I could make one more request, is that okay? Can I bring up one more subject? High five in the chat. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, what I want to quickly share is, is an opportunity uh, that, that I tell people that as I do speaking, especially as I get near the end, to work together one-on-one uh, -on -one or in a small group if you were interested. And I'm actually a coach, and I help people to see how gratitude can reframe your attitude and your life. So what I would like to offer to all of you is what I call a complimentary consultation. It is basically a 45 to 60-minute phone call whereby three things happen. First, I like to give more value. I love to hear people's story and get to know more about them and their challenges and the shifts in their life that they're looking to make. And I can pretty easily give feedback from the conversation and provide some thoughts and insights. Second, I'm listening to see if we might be a fit to work together as your coach. I love working with people. I'm very selective though about who I work with in order to find people that really wanna make changes and not just talk about it. And then lastly, it gives you a chance to kind of interview me and get to know if you want to maybe hire me and not just, or just think about what I even benefit just from talking to him. Uh, a current client, Ryan wrote, David has helped me become more productive at work and truly value myself and my family. He's a great man with life experience that will help you realize what you should be grateful for. And once you have that, it's all the motivation you need, end quote. So if that is you, just put your name into the chat and phone number, or I've actually got a scheduler link that Brittany has put in there, uh, and you can schedule uh, one hour with me in the next uh, few days or when it's convenient, and we can see if that might be something you would be interested in. So thank you. So second, second gift is 
on, and this is going to require some fast typing for those that are interested because I have not seen you in person. I'm on Zoom. So I was thinking what I'd like to do is on the ones that you get on my website, the gratitude journals, they are $15 as I mentioned. So I was thinking, I think what I'll do is I'm going to take a $15 journal and a $15 six word lessons to embrace gratitude. And this is a hundred lessons to enhance your life by practicing gratitude every day, a hundred nuggets. It's really cool. Um, something I worked on through a publishing house. I will send those two books plus a gratitude rock. This is really cool that you get to keep in your pocket. And when you touch that gratitude pocket, uh, gratitude pocket, I've never heard of that. When you touch that gratitude rock in your pocket, in your handbag, wherever it might be, you get a chance to think about what you're grateful for, who you're grateful to, anything else, but it's such a great reminder. They're really cool. They're smooth. They're ground down and it says gratitude. So I'm going to send these two books plus this gratitude rock to the first five people that type in their name and mailing address into the chat, five people only, and then I will mail those out in the next day. So I know it takes a few minutes to type that in. So just your name and whatever mailing address works for you. And the first five people, I'll send you both books and the gratitude rock just as a thanks for being on the, <laughs> on the, uh, Kim is the first person that put her address. Okay, do we have to make sure you got the zip code on there too? Nope, no zip code yet. I'll get that for so sure. So Anna, Anna would be the first. Okay, so I got to wrap up because I promised Brittany I'd be done at exactly 11 o'clock and I'm a little bit past. So there's your two gifts too, but it looks like have we got enough addresses in there. We do. Top five. Okay, good. Thank you. And then for those of you that don't get in the top five, you can get that on the website too. So last thing I want to talk about is sharing gratitude. It helps so much. If you're even talking about fatigue, the more you share with somebody that you're going through something, well, here's how, look at all those things that people said about here's exercise, meditation, the things to do, how to help themselves. There's nothing better than sharing the burden, sharing the responsibility. Two people can pedal a bike so much better on a two-person bike than one person on a one-person bike. It's just part of how we do it. So take out your cell phones again. I want, excuse me, I want you, this is called the four T's, and then we're going to be done in about two minutes. Text, tweet, telephone, or tell. But most people, I think, are going to text. I want you to text somebody in your life right now and tell them how grateful you are, and please use the word grateful to have them in your life. 30 seconds, text whoever you want, let them know how grateful you are to have them in your life, and please use the word grateful. I'll give you 30 seconds. Okay, and that was about 30 seconds. When I go to the, uh, the junior high schools, 10 texts already. They already texted so many people in their entire family. And then when I go to the senior centers, it's like I got to go like a minute or two and they're like taking the time. So I try to gauge that as best I can. But I will tell you, it is so much fun because people come up to me again. We're on Zoom, so it's a little bit different. But they come up to me in person afterwards and they want to show me their text. And they go, you know, like, look at this. And they show me the text that the person sent back to them. And one of them said, I'm grateful for you too. What do you want? And I went, wow, man, that's, that's kind of mean. And another one showed me the text and it says, I'm grateful for you too. Are you sure you sent this to the right person? <laughs> I thought, wow, again, kind of. And clearly one I'll never forget was out at Bothell at a chamber of commerce big meeting and there's about 250 people it was big and most people are texting but one was actually using the t for telephone and she was calling and i could hear her from the stage and she goes you know hi honey i just want to tell you i'm assuming her husband honey i just want to tell you how um great grateful i am for you and how much i appreciate you and i just really i don't know some speaker just told me to call you and tell you <laughs> wow another mistake no it's supposed to be your idea what are you talking about anyway so but remember that and you can can you ever send somebody flowers too many times can you ever tell them how much you love them i mean after all 
What does that say? That was easy. Yep, it was easy. <laughs> so it's always something that doing those little things, and hopefully you've had enough little things a day that'll add up to a great, great impact on this fatigue and helping you manage it and navigate it a little bit better. I'm David George Brook, that gratitude guy. Brittany's going to wrap things up. Thank you so much for attending today. Thank you. Thanks for those applause. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I'm just copying one more time. So sorry for lack of eye contact here. Wanted to put in the chat feature once more David's information. So if you would like to reach out to him, if you have any questions, feel free to text or email. Um, and also, is, are there any questions that anybody has right now? We could go over those real quick, but otherwise, I'd just like to thank you all for joining us today. I hope that um, your time with us has has made you more grateful for your day and just put things into perspective for you. David, thank you so much for everything that you shared and just for your giving spirit and helping us to have an attitude of gratitude. And uh, I hope everybody has a great day. So um, great way to start your day. And uh, thank you again for joining. Take care, everyone. <laughs>